What connects a prestigious university, a local preacher, and an example of early urban planning? The answer is Oxford Street in Southampton. Queen's College Oxford was founded in 1341 by Robert de Engelsville, a chaplain in the household of Queen Philippa, who named it in her honour. Initially, Queen's was poor, but crucially, in 1343, Philippa, wife of Edward III, secured a small hospital in Southampton with its agricultural land bordering mud flats for the college. In 1840, the railway arrived and built a station near the same spot, and in 1842, George Lashley, a linen draper and office holder in the Wesleyan circuit, leased a portion of the land for 40 years at yearly rent of £10. Hence the place names Queen's Park and Oxford Street. George Lashley put into practice the exhortation, Employ whatever God has entrusted you with in doing good, all possible good, in every possible kind and degree, to the household of faith to all men, and went on to divide the site into 187 lots and sublet them to under tenants. The lease required him to plan and construct the streets Oxford, John and Latimer, and stipulated that he must spend £20,000 for the erection and finishing in good and substantial manner dwelling house, warehouse, store or factories, all to be built using suitable materials and for permanent, not temporary use. The outcome was that the grand houses built at the end of Southampton's spa period in the early 1800s were dismantled to make way for the new development. The Oxford Street Conservation Area is bounded by God's House Tower, Queen's Park, Bernard Street and South Western House, but its core is Oxford Street. Starting at the northeastern corner at the junction with Bernard Street is number one Oxford Street, now an Indian restaurant built from Edwardian Hamstone, the name given to a honey coloured building stone from Ham Hill, Somerset, formerly a bank, the building indicates the western end of Oxford Street. A few metres along Oxford Street are numbers ten to twenty four, a terrace of eight three storey white stuccoed houses. Numbers 18 to 24 are similar, but they have a bay window on the first floor. Mainly built between 1840 and 1870, notable features of the group include round-headed door cases, cornice and blocking courses, cast iron balconies and string courses over the ground floor. Stucco is a type of render made of aggregates, a binder and water that when applied wet hardens to a very dense solid. Several of the properties are occupied as offices, with those at the eastern end having 19th century shop fronts. Number 25 Oxford Street on the corner of Latimer and Oxford Street, now Prezzo, was the former American Express Company office where passengers collected their tickets before embarking. It is a mid-19th century shop, partially rebuilt between 1846 and 1870. The building has a rendered façade and original small window pane sashes. This much altered at roof level of the shop front remains intact. Across Latimer Street is the White Star Tavern at numbers 26 and 28, formerly the Alliance Hotel. A red brick facade fronts onto Oxford Street with white painted mouldings together with a buff yellow elevation and turning the corner a cantilevered first floor angular bay. The renaming was to emphasise the link with the Titanic owned by White Star. 29-year-old Lewis Braun from Devon spent the night here before travelling on the Titanic. He was a farm labourer and paid £7.11 pence for his ticket. He was travelling onwards to Canada. Lewis's brother Jim had emigrated some years earlier. Lewis was travelling with his brother Owen, his cousins Samuel Dennis, William Dennis, John Henry Perkin and John Hall Lovell and his friend Susan Webber. None of the members of the Braun family survived, but Susan Webber was rescued from lifeboat number 12. At the time, number 29 Oxford Street, now the Olive Tree Restaurant, was a bakery owned by James Wildman, a pastry chef and confectioner. Number 31 to 32 Oxford Street, which includes 1 and 2 John Street, 
is effectively one building currently in use as Pizza Express. Features of the red brick building include red stone forwards, terracotta mouldings, a slate mansard roof and par original piers to the ground floor. Number 31 was also one of the many tobacconists on the street owned by Arthur Edwin Bannister and his wife Matilda who helped in the business. Number 33 to 34 Oxford Street, the Oxford Hotel was owned by Walter Percy Brandon. Today is the Oxford Brasserie. Number 35 to 36 Oxford Street or Oxford's is an early Wardian red brick building with three stories with stone window surrounds in a neo-baroque style with original sash windows. The ground floor now Simons at Oxford has a 1920s early 1930s shop front with bronze detailing. It was previously occupied by Miller Rainier Limited, a naval tailors and outfitters who supplied uniforms to the crew and officers of the White Star Line and other shipping lines. Although it looks older, the London Hotel was built in 1907. Its ornate green tiled exterior makes it very distinctive. The pub sports a nearly full set of etched and beveled decorative glass windows, any replacements being etched copies. A small stage is the focus for diverse weekend evening entertainments, which has earned the London a reputation as one of the friendliest venues in Southampton. Opposite Oxford Street was the Southampton Terminus, the main railway station built by the London and South Western Railway in 1839. It was designed by William Tyke and opened in May 1840, making it one of the world's oldest surviving station buildings. It is an imposing three-storey stuccoed building in a restricted classical style. The ground floor has five arched openings, the central three forming the entrance to the station. Southampton Terminus Station is now in use as a casino with offices at first floor. In the immediate south and outside Oxford Street is South Western House, formerly the hotel dominating the eastern docks. It was the choice for those travelling first class, but is now converted into a restaurant and an apartment building. In the 1840s, the two leading male steamship companies of the era, the Peninsula and Oriental, later P&O, and the Royal Mail Steam Packet Company, chose Southampton as their principal mail packet station instead of Falmouth. The Royal Mail Company secured the government contract for the West Indies and South American mails and P&O for the Mediterranean and Indian mails. These early successes in attracting these two companies to the port was a significant boost to the commercial success of the docks. Royal Mail House is at the very eastern end of Oxford Street, actually in Terminus Terrace. It is a mid-19th century building of three stories with sash windows and attics. The Royal Mail Steam Packet Company offices were originally situated near the dock gates on Canute Road, but in 1907 they moved to the building on the corner of Terminus Terrace and Queen's Terrace, which was previously Radley's Hotel. The building still known as Royal Mail House is Grade 2 listed. Number 3739 was Rolls Temperance Hotel, owned by Mr. M. Jacobson. A temperance house was a hotel that didn't serve alcohol. Today, the largest part of the building is Cutie's Brasserie and Scoozy Restaurant, which is also part of Royal Mail House. As we return back down Oxford Street on the other side of the road, next door, number 40, was a tobacconist. Either side of the grapes at number 44 and 40 were two more tobacconists, one of which, number 40, is now Max's Bar and Brasserie. 41 to 42 Oxford Street is the Grapes Public House, also a Grade 2 listed building, made of yellow brick with flash windows and a late 19th century ground floor frontage and entrance. The Grapes is listed in street directories from 1851. It was situated close to the docks and was popular with both dock workers and crew members. It is a 15 minute walk to Dock Gate 4 and the Titanic Berth and Stokers, Thomas Bertram, Alfred Slade and Frank Holden were drinking on the morning of the 10th of April 1912. Second-class passenger Lawrence Beasley describes how they arrived late at the Titanic's gam plank and were turned away by a petty officer. Number 44 is an early 19th century painted brick with a cantilevered bow window to the first floor. The shop front is late 19th century. Numbers 45 to 47 Oxford Street is a terrace of three early 19th century properties and built of painted brick and have one sash window at the second and first floors with late 19th century shop fronts 
Books, and number 47 in 1912 was Fred Everard Hairdressers and is now Cask Away Tasting Rooms. All are Grade 2 listed for their group value. 48 to 49 Oxford Street stands on the corner of Latimer Street based in Stucco. Number 49 has a cantilever bow window to the first floor, which on number 48 is replaced by a square bay window. There is a further cantilever bow window on the Latimer Street facade. On the corner there are ionic and pilasters and decorative mouldings. Cecil Burrell and his wife owned Payne's Temperance Hotel at number 48. Numbers 51 to 57 at the Sailor's Home opened in 1909 to provide accommodation for the merchant Navy sailors. Also, orphans were brought up here before they were sent to sea. 24 members of the Titanic's crew spent their last night on land here. 17 gave the seamen's houses their address and 15 survived. The building is now run by the Salvation Army. Number 59 at Oxford Street, now Charlie Chance, was once at the back and is owned by Frank Henry George. Number 61 is a three-storied neoclassical townhouse of the 1830s, which retains many original internal features. It was at one time the home of Lucia Foster Welch, the first Lady Mayor of Southampton. The main facade is a triple round-headed casement window on the second floor, while on the first floor there is a large sash window set inside a recessed arch with a stuccoed wreath motif. The canted bay window to the ground floor is a later addition. To the left is a two-storied entrance bay with a pedimented entrance framed by pilasters. Along this side of Oxford Street, numbers 62 to 65 represent a modern infill development in keeping with the scale of this part of Oxford Street, the buildings are three and a half storeys, combining a mix of brick with a series of bowed rendered panels through first to second floors. Number 62 was Hooper's Temperance Hotel run by Charles Sharp and his wife, Mary. Five Titanic crewmen stayed at the hotel and only one survived. These buildings were situated at the northwest part of Oxford Street. Premises shown are Hooper's Temperance Hotel. The lorry belongs to Fred Trim Limited at number 63 to 65. Today, although the street pattern was laid out by George Lacey in the years following 1842, the architecture does not hold to any discernible or regular pattern. To some critics, this may appear disconcerting, but to local residents, it reflects the lively and dynamic feel that makes Oxford Street so popular.